Could a big win by Donald Trump actually hurt California Republican turnout in the March 2024 primary? We'll sort it all out. Also, the crime wave hitting California takes another big victim, a cherished institution in our state. All that and more coming up. I'm Carl DeMaio, Chairman of Reform California, and we're covering a couple important stories today. Well, while we're all inside with the massive storms that have hit uh, Southern California, um, I have to kind of chuckle. Whenever there's a, just a little bit of rain on the on the road wave, road waves, uh, roadways, Californians uh, just absolutely go insane. Uh, these are normal storms, nothing to worry about. But God, it is amusing to see people just, I don't know, treat it like it's some major hurricane situation. Uh, but what is a hurricane is the force of the Donald Trump presidential campaign as he is crushing it in these uh, early contests, as we all expected he would. Uh, Ron DeSantis is out of the race. Now you got Nikki Haley sputtering along. And so what would uh, the impact of Trump's early momentum uh, be on California's March primary? I've said on this podcast that Trump is going to win all the delegates in California. I made that prediction long ago. I stand by it and it's coming true. Um, but and and California, by the way, will probably put him over the top in terms of the nomination. But a bunch of early wins by President Trump has led political observers to say that here in California, that Republicans will be hurt by the the notion that the presidential primary will be over, largely over, a foregone conclusion by the time Republicans in California cast their ballots on March fifth. So I wanted to quickly address this because I know I've heard from a lot of you concerned about, well, does this mean that we're going to have a bad March primary? The answer is no, not at all. I think some of this is just wishful thinking by Democrat political operatives and members of the media. Um, although, is there really a difference between members of the media and Democrat political operatives? So here's how their theory goes, that when Trump uh, puts this race to bed, pretty much it is to bed already, that Republican Trump voters um, will say, okay, great. My guy, um, my guy basically has won. I don't need to show up and vote. And that the anti-Republican Trump voters, uh, the anti-Republican uh, never Trump voters who support maybe Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley will say, well, since, you know, my candidate's no longer there, I'm not going to show up and vote. And these Democrat activists, political consultants and media um, prognosticators have said, as a result of all of this, um, one victim will be uh, Steve Garvey, who's running for U.S. Senate, and uh, that that somehow Republican turnout will be less in the primary, and so there will be the top two Democrats that emerge uh, in the U.S. Senate race in California, probably Katie Porter and definitely uh, pencil neck Adam Schiff. Uh, so that's one race that they cite as an example, but. Um, if their theory is correct, and I'll tell you in a moment my take on their theory, if their theory is correct, it may have a negative impact on a bunch of Republican races across the state. Even the race that I'm in, uh, in the 75th Assembly District, where you've got three Democrats running and me and two no-name Republicans running, uh, is it possible that low Republican turnout could hand the seat I'm running for over to the Democrats if top two Democrats get in the runoff? Look, anything's possible, but I don't see it as probable. I don't see it as actually likely. And here's why. California Republicans that are going to vote in a primary are going to vote in a primary one way or another. There are a lot of other things on the ballot, including that U.S. Senate race that I just talked about. They want to make sure that at least there's some option in November. Uh, and, uh, you know, S Steve, Steve Garvey may not be the uh, 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 most conservative candidate running. But a lot of people know of him from his baseball career. Um, there's also local races that are real important. Um, for example, in my race, we're seeing lots of enthusiasm and support. And a lot of my supporters are chomping at the bit to cast a ballot. Um, so the idea that people would only uh, show up for just uh, one race, the presidential race, uh, I don't see that happening. Plus, 
the polling already suggested that Trump was going to crush it in California and was crushing it in other states. We haven't seen a drop off of interest. You also have a lot of voters who want to show up and vote because they do like Donald Trump. Even if he's the nominee, they want to run up the tally, run up the score. Uh, you know, we will make it a blowout because again, his name is on the ballot. His name is on the ballot and they've waited for his name to be on the ballot for four years. And so I don't see this geniusing theory that the Democrats and the media have, um, have proffered. Um, and finally, we at Reform California are going to do everything we can to spike turnout of common sense voters because we're leading the fight against proposition one. Uh, the very deceptively worded ballot measure that would raid treatment funds and divert funding from homeless programs to rich developers in the form of subsidies for government subsidized welfare housing projects, expensive boondoggles. So there are a lot of things on the ballot that I think will cause people to turn out. Um, and Trump having the nomination sewn up, again, I don't think is going to be a major factor depressing turnout in this primary. A couple other stories I want to get to real quick. Uh, did you see this uh, story out in L.A.? Uh, it's the crime wave. Here's a government car um, crashing into a, um, uh, a store. Uh, let me see if I can turn on the audio on this real quick. Yes, I can. Oh, for hour, that's where she spoke with the owner. And suspects ramming this car into a clothing store a number of times before ransacking and stealing hundreds of items. Police have confirmed that the suspect used a stolen government vehicle to ram into that business. And now an investigation is underway. KTLA's Jennifer McGraw is live in Belfast Hour. That's where she spoke with the owner. Jennifer. Karina and Rick, it happened around 5 o'clock this morning. The car in the video you can see just being rammed into the front door, finally breaking this gate wide open. Multiple people then ran into the business. They smashed things. They grabbed things. And they stole this is a of theft ring, in stealing a government car to then bash that car into a small business owner's uh, uh, shop to steal as a bunch of looters, um, whatever they can. Only in California, right? There you go. You know, this is this is what the Democrat coddle the criminal policies will bring you. Absolute mayhem, absolute insanity. Well, the crime wave has taken another uh, victim, and that is uh, <clears throat> a cherished institution in California. People love In-N-Out Burger. It is associated with California almost as much as beaches and sunshine, uh, and now, sadly, crime. But In-N-Out has announced they are pulling out of a major California city, Oakland. They were slowly closing their In-N-Out Burgers one by one by one, not because they weren't making money. I mean, come on, these in and out burgers are printing money. They're so popular. Nope, because crime. Uh, so they closed their profitable Oakland location. Uh, they said, quote, uh, multiple efforts to protect workers from rising crime were unsuccessful. So they can't keep their workers safe. And as a result, they're doing the uh, responsible thing and just shutting down that store. I venture to guess that the workers of that store, being from Oakland, uh, they are probably all Democrat. They voted for Democrat politicians. And now they're out of work. Congratulations, you get what you support. The joke's on you. Well, actually, sadly, the joke's on all of us because yet another good business is gone. Jobs are gone. The criminals got what they wanted. Um, it's just insanity. We absolutely have to see a way to deal with the crime wave in California. And it starts by changing the politicians that are being elected. That's why I want you to go to the website, reformcalifornia.org, and check out our voter guide. Our plain English voter guide is now available for the March 2024 primary. Uh, click under election guide and go to the county or region that you live in, or use the statewide guide. Share it with your friends and family because we really need to get this guide in the hands of as many voters as possible. It is, it's up to you to be our distribution network. It's word of mouth, friends telling friends, neighbors telling neighbors. So please go on that website, check out those voter guides and help us advertise the voter guide and mail the voter guide out and canvas door to door with the voter guide and target seats. Ship in a contribution at reformcalifornia.org to spread the word.
One last story I want to get to, and it's insanity um, at the uh, city of San Diego. You want to talk about wokeism? Um, if you've ever been to a rodeo, they are amazing fun, and they're very patriotic, very America first in terms of the folks that are there and just the wonderful uh, entertainment. Well, the same yahoos that don't like SeaWorld having uh, fish in tanks and having um, aquatic shows, um, those yahoos, PETA, have decided that they're going to want to ban rodeos in Southern California. And they've decided to go to the liberal leaning San Diego City Council to try to enact one of their first bans. Here is the story. There's a new push to ban rodeos in the city of San Diego. A council member is now planning to introduce a new proposal just days after the first rodeo at Petco Park. Fox 5's Christelle Kumwe live for us in Moreno with the reaction from supporters and from opponents. Christelle. Yeah, good evening, Andrew. Now, the proposed ban actually comes after a lawsuit was filed against the city and Petco Park to prevent the rodeo from happening here in the first place. Now, today, Council Member Kent Lee says he hopes to make this ban citywide because animals are just not for entertainment. <laughs> Petco Park's inaugural rodeo. Animals have rights, to too. To animals are not for entertainment. They're not for entertainment. What do you call the ladies on The View? I mean, come on. Um, this is just insanity. It goes with the theory that I have. Um, and it, this theory, is, I think, is proven by our experience and evidence. Liberals have sapped the joy out of life. Anything good that we enjoy has been seen and turned into something bad by the liberals, something to be banned and taken away from all of us. Rodeos are just the latest. On Friday, and I jumped on board. Welcomed thousands of excited fans like Tim Meek. It just seemed like a, a cool opportunity. But he says the event took a turn. It was really kind of crazy how it, it all ended that, that evening. During an indigenous relay race Friday evening, a racehorse got injured. It just ran a full speed directly into the, uh, the gate on the other side of, uh, of the rink and just fell completely flat. And then this is after the horse fell into, uh, ran into the gate, ended up getting tarped up. So we have uh, one organizer accident, said we have to shut it all down. Um, how many of you enjoy football? Have you seen people get injured on the field for football? What, cat got your tongue? Waiting for Colin Kaepernick not to uh, uh, stand for the national anthem? I, I mean, it's a sport. It's entertainment. Every time, every once in a while, you have injuries. Uh, but again, I'm not trying to plant any ideas in the liberals' minds about banning football. <clears throat> as long as those football players are woke, I don't think that they will do anything but rush to their defense. Um, but they're taking fun out of our lives. And there, let's just be clear about this. Rodeos attract a conservative audience a very conservative audience. They have an assault on our way of life. They hate our way of life. And I'm not saying that everyone going to a rodeo is conservative, but predominantly they are. Hey, the horse is alive and well. In the, the scope of what could have happened in a rodeo, this was relatively mild. But Gary Weitzman, president of the San Diego Humane Society, says rodeos oh, have no place here. He should be <laughs> rescuing cats and dogs in his animal shelter, not doing this political stuff. Shame on you, Gary. I know Gary personally. He runs a good uh, shelter down there, but oh, just stop the politics, man. He, uh, he had one a good friend of mine. Uh, conservative Phil Pace, Phil Pace of Phil's Barbecue, on his board. And his staff absolutely disrespected Phil and all the generous things that Phil has done for animal uh, welfare. And the guy's a saint when it comes to taking care of animals. Absolutely amazing. Um, he does, he has, I think he still has his horse rescue uh, program that he privately funds and takes care of those horses. But anyway, um, they didn't like the fact that he was conservative and they bad-mouthed him. And so Phil Pace was like, why do why should I stay around and be attacked for my political views? The, Gary Weitzman at the San Diego Humane Society um, is just plain politics. Stick to your day job, Gary. Take care of these animals. Stop spending money and time and resources on politics.
just insane. Uh, I won't go on uh, and belabor the point, but we will be opposing this rodeo ban in the city of San Diego. Um, those are our top stories. Please make sure you help us get a good turnout in this election. Check out those voter guides at reformcalifornia.org. Chip in a contribution. Until next time, Carl DeMaio, chairman of Reform California. Help us break through the censorship of the liberal media. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and smash that notification button so you can stay up to date on all the developments in California news and politics. Also, please visit the website reformcalifornia.org for ongoing news coverage and to join one of our campaigns in the fight to take back our state. If you can, please sign up as a volunteer or chip in a contribution. This episode of Reform California with Carl DeMaio, paid for by Carl DeMaio for State Assembly 2024.